Welcome to the most accurate mock draft ever. Guaranteed. Guaranteed not good in continental United States, Alaska, Hawaii, or anywhere else on planet Earth. The 2011 NFL Draft is finally here, but I thought I'd take one more stab at what I thought might happen tonight in the first round. Roger, take it away. With the first pick of the draft, the Carolina Panthers swing for the fences by drafting Auburn quarterback Cam Newton. Newton comes with red flags, but also a high amount of athleticism, a huge arm, and great mobility. If Newton's the guy they think he is, the Panthers are in great shape, but if not, those red flags could set back this franchise quite a while. With the second pick, Denver Broncos go a different direction and grab Marcel Darius, defensive tackle from Alabama. A little while back, Daquan Bowers was a lock here, but knee issues have pushed him off the chart. Darius is an explosive playmaker in the interior and will pull attention away from Ayers and Doomerville, solidifying this defensive line for years to come. With the third pick of the draft, Lane Gabbert goes to the Buffalo Bills. Gabbert is a smart, athletic, mobile QB with less upside than Cam Newton, but less downside as well. He's the sort of player Chan Gailey can do wonders with, and he could sit behind Fitzpatrick as he adjusted to the speed of the NFL as well. At number four, the Cincinnati Bengals go A.J. Green, wide receiver from Georgia. Green didn't have the workout that Julio Jones did at the Combine, but he's healthy, performed at a high level more consistently, and more important, the tape is just better. He'd have the skill without the attitude and may bring Palmer back to the fold. With Green and the top quarterbacks off the board, the Arizona Cardinals will turn their attention to Von Miller, linebacker from Texas A&M. Miller is a fierce pass rusher, a beast who can get in the backfield and cause havoc. Miller will help solidify this defense and hopefully keep the offense from having to come from behind in huge deficits a lot more frequently. Daquan Bowers finds a home in Cleveland as the Browns overlook the knee concerns which really have been blown out of proportion. He could be a pass rushing force that this defense desperately needs. Bowers' upside, if he's healthy, is huge. If Patrick Peterson is there, San Francisco will sprint to the podium. The secondary is either old or average, and Peterson is arguably the best player in this entire draft. He would continue to help build this improving defense into a force and give them the edge they need to defend against tougher quarterbacks. The Tennessee Titans could go several ways with their picks, but Nick Fairley, defensive tackle from Auburn, is the way they're going to go. He's a tall, relatively lean-framed guy with excellent quickness. He would fit the way the Titans like their linemen to be. Yes, they have to worry about his inconsistent motor and drive, but if they can control him, his nasty demeanor will make him a force. The Cowboys need to keep Tony Romo upright, so Jason Garrett and Jerry Jones may need to buck the Dallas trend of not taking offensive tackles by grabbing Tyron Smith of USC. Smith is a solid prospect who is a little bit raw, but should be able to help shore that lineup and keep Romo healthy and on the field. With Santana Moss a free agent, Julio Jones becomes a very attractive choice for the Washington Redskins. Jones is a tough, reliable wide receiver who didn't put up great stats at Alabama, but put up some great performances at the Combine and overall flashed some real ability. The Redskins would be happy to have him here. The Houston Texans need secondary help, and they need a guy who's not afraid to get his hands dirty, and that's Prince of Makamura. Makamura was very willing at Nebraska to get in there against the run, as well as make a hard hit across the middle. The Texans lack that killer instinct, but a Makamura could help put them back on track to being able to stand up to guys like Peyton Manning in their division. The Minnesota Vikings could reach for a quarterback here, but instead, I think they shore up an effective but aging defensive line by grabbing Robert Quinn from North Carolina. Quinn would have been a higher pick here if not for some off-the-field shenanigans stemming from some interaction with an agent. He's got the potential to develop into one of the league's most feared sack artists, and he could be a real steal here. Up next, the Detroit Lions grab Anthony Costanzo from Boston College. They desperately need to keep Stafford healthy. While the offensive line played better last year, it wasn't good enough. Costanzo's a safe, solid pick who can play for years on the line. In order for their defense to be effective, the Rams need to generate pressure. J.J. Watt has a great motor, is incredibly athletic, and is huge coming off the edge. He's a very disruptive force in the passing defense, and he should be able to get the Rams the pressure they need. This pick will make Rams fans ecstatic. 
As much as we've heard Ingram or Mallet with this pick, the Miami Dolphins need to improve that offensive line, and Mike Pouncey from Florida would be an excellent choice. He would allow them to move Richie Incognito from left guard to center and shore up the middle of that line. Pouncey would be an extraordinary asset to this line. The Jacksonville Jaguars are another team people talk about when it comes to quarterbacks in the first round, but I think they go the opposite way, grabbing Cameron Jordan, defensive end from Cal. Jordan is a disruptive pass rusher, able to get in the backfield and make a mess of plays, and I think that Jordan is a great addition to this line. With the first of their two picks, the New England Patriots grab Alden Smith, defensive end from Missouri. Smith might convert to linebacker, and there's a little question mark as to whether he can pull it off, but Bill Belichick is the guy who's going to be able to get this cat to do that conversion if anyone's going to be able to. He is a Bill Belichick player. The San Diego Chargers are a team in desperate need of defensive line help, and Ryan Kerrigan, defensive end from Purdue, may be the guy to do it. Kerrigan brings a relentless pass rush and is a force in the backfield. He was a former Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in 2010 and had a lot of fumbles for Purdue. He may be able to make an immediate difference in this defense. The New York Giants have several needs. Offensive line is probably their biggest one, and Nate Solder, offensive tackle from Colorado, is a guy who has tremendous size, which allows him to get leveraged on defenders. He's a bit raw, but his athleticism will help him come along very quickly. The Bucks have their offense locked down, now it's time to work on the defense. Adrian Claiborne, defensive end from Iowa, is a great defender, and considering the Bucks had a four and a half sack leader on their team, they really need a top defensive end. Adrian Claiborne's that guy. He's going to be able to increase those sacks tenfold. For years, I've begged the Chiefs to address the offensive line, and yet they never listened to me. Maybe this is the year because Gabe Karimi, offensive tackle from Wisconsin, too good to pass up. The Outland Trophy winner would be great at left tackle and would help protect Castle and open holes for Jamal Charles all year long. Yes, the Indianapolis Colts need to do something about the offensive line, but when they see Illinois defensive tackle Corey Legit there, they're going to jump on this athletic, quick, and penetrating three technique. Legit can get in the backfield and not only take down a quarterback, but he can stymie a runner as well. He's quick, he's fearless, he's a perfect fit for the Colts. With Ellis Hobbs retiring due to an injury, cornerback becomes a major issue for the Philadelphia Eagles. Jimmy Smith has some off-the-field issues, but Andy Reid's not afraid to take on a talented but troubled guy. This is a player who would be able to make a big difference in the secondary, and Andy Reid will roll the dice. Temple defensive tackle Muhammad Wilkerson wouldn't be the sexiest pick the New Orleans Saints ever made, but he's a big athletic player who's good against the run and good against the pass. He's also versatile enough to either play end or tackle depending on what the Saints needed. He'd be a great fit on the left side, and he'd be a good replacement for the aging Charles Grant. For all the talk the Seahawks need a quarterback, it won't matter who throws the ball if they're not upright. Danny Watkins, guard from Baylor, is a guy who'd be able to help whoever throws the ball stay on his feet. Watkins is very talented. At 27, the age is a concern, but with it comes maturity that the Seahawks and Pete Carroll would like. Cameron Hayward, defense fan from the Ohio State Buckeyes, is an intriguing guy. Son of the former Saint running back Craig Ironhead Hayward, he has the ability to line up at the five technique and can generate a great pass rush. Hayward is the sort of guy who might be able to fit in for the Ravens now that Trevor Price is. Georgia defensive end Justin Houston has the strength and speed to become a real pass rushing force in the league. Since the Falcons only have John Abraham, but nobody else much behind him, Houston would instantly get into the rotation and help the production for this team. While I expect the New England Patriots to trade out of this spot, if they don't, Mark Ingram would be an incredible addition to this backfield. Yes, they have Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis, and yes, they have Danny Woodhead, but neither of them bring the power, versatility, and football smarts to the table that Ingram has. This would make the Patriots a deadly team on the ground. Moving along, the Bears take Derek Sherrod, offensive tackle from Mississippi State. The O-line played better last year, but better than terrible isn't much to crow about, and Sherrod is a pro-ready offensive tackle who could play either left or right sides. 
and would have an immediate impact for the Bears. At pick 30, the New York Jets take Phil Taylor, defensive tackle from Baylor. The Jets could really, really use a pass rush, like a lot. All indications are the Jets would use their first round pick to upgrade the front seven. Chris Jenkins needs to be replaced at nose tackle, and Taylor would be a perfect fit. He's explosive, strong, and eats up runners who cross his path. The Pittsburgh Steelers secondary let them down in the Super Bowl, and Ike Taylor could leave in free agency. So, the Steelers should take a long look at Aaron Williams, the cornerback out of Texas. Williams is a fast, big, hard-hitting cornerback or safety, depending on what you need, and would be a great fit for the Steelers' scheme. He could slip right into the lineup and start right away. What do you get for the team who has everything and brought home the Lombardi Trophy? Well, Green Bay, I give you Akeem Ayers, linebacker from UCLA. Some more pressure off the edge across from Clay Sampson Matthews would be very helpful. And in a 3-4 defense, an outside linebacker can be very productive. Ayers has the speed and tenacity to be very, very good in this league. Before I go, I want to give a special shout out to Aaron Aloysius for a lot of the tape footage. Check him out on YouTube.